I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. Hi, Lynn. I don't know if it was you I shared this story with a few years back, but it's true and needs to be told. My incident happened over a series of days in 2015, Ojai, California, usually about 5.30 in the morning. I was driving a large van on a two-lane road through a canyon with a creek bed on my way to pick up my special needs passengers to take them to school. Suddenly, a mature deer came out of the woods and ran right alongside me as if to get away from something scarier than people. As I took my foot off the gas, I slowed and then seemed to speed up, which I found odd. Further on, an apparently young man came to the edge of the road on my left, smiling where the creek was. I stopped on a dime to let him pass to the other side, a steep cliff going up. Instead of seeing him pass, all I could see was apparent fur across two-thirds of my windshield, and my driver's door window went black. It was dark outside, and I could see the hair and fur because of my headlights. Then, in a swift motion, the fur went to the nearly straight-up cliff and disappeared, with an owl being knocked to the ground from its perch. The only way a human being could have ascended that steep incline would have been with a rope with a hook on the end and pulling himself up. But these apparent animals went up like the wind. What I later figured happened is the six-foot person I stopped the car for must have been a young Bigfoot, and the two adult Bigfoots escorted it up the hill on my right for protection. The one in front of the van was so tall I couldn't even make out a shoulder. The one on the driver's door was no doubt keeping me from stepping out. Bigfoot crossing guards, or I witnessed a human abduction. When I returned from the trip, I noticed an 18-inch muddy handprint on the back of the van, and it must have been made when I was accelerating, even though my foot was off the gas. I had apparently intruded upon their hunt, and he was pushing me down the road to get me out of the way. On a subsequent visit, I would roll my window down and whistle in the direction of the creek as I drove by. I did this for a week until one day I turned the corner to that spot and there was a broken off tree in the middle of the road which made the hair on my neck rise. Upon inspection, later in the daylight, I saw that it had been broken off 50 feet from the road, 8 feet up the tree, and carried since there were no drag marks. It was a healthy tree, 10 inches in diameter. On Christmas Day, I went out to look for footprints. The moment I opened my car door and stepped out, there was a huge wood bashing on one of the hundreds of oak trees opposite the creek that echoed all over the area. As I said, it would be extremely difficult for a man to go up that very steep incline in those oak trees. I went to the creek area but felt I should not venture further, due to the warning knocks from the sentinel Bigfoot had to be one or more of them right where I was. I got in my car and left. There were three huge bashing wood knocks, three at a time, that echoed everywhere while I was there. One morning, when I was picking up one of the kids located directly over the hill from that creek, there was a huge wood knock in the woods behind that house. They know me, what I look like, and are warning me. The interest of that Bigfoot and the particular house came to mind. There are stacked rocks all over the yard at this house, very carefully balanced. The owner lady told me she did it herself, but sounded very unbelievable. Why would someone make 50 piles of carefully balanced rocks in their front yard? It's my opinion that she has developed a relationship with a Bigfoot, or perhaps more than one. I asked a homeless person if he knew anything about Bigfoot in the area, and he told me that he was aware of a family of three living in the creek area. I saw three. He told me that one of his friends tried sleeping under the bridge at the creek, and his mangled and torn up body was later found, having been dragged out from under the bridge. The sheriff said it was a bear or mountain lion, but the homeless guy said no. The body was too severely shredded for that to be true. A lady actor from the local playhouse said she was doing her usual Saturday night traveling through that creek area after a show when, without warning, the car slid into the next lane. She stopped and nothing was there. She later went to the gas station and looked for dancer scratches, and there weren't any. She makes no conjecture as to what happened and by who. One morning, after the tree in the road, I looked over to the creek area and saw two red glowing eyes, very wide apart, and possibly high off the ground. 
could have been ten feet tall. Deer commonly come darting out from the darkness toward my vehicle before sunrise. This is unnatural and a sure sign of seeking protection. I have tried to get any Bigfoot searching teams across the nation to come and find Bigfoot's lair, and they have shown zero interest, and I've been snubbed. What the hell? After this experience, I was in touch with Art Bell, who took interest and wanted updates. If it's a new story to you, feel free. Tim This next email comes from Charles. This incident happened in Oregon in 2012. This is his story. Greetings. I would like to relay an experience that my wife, daughter, and I had. Although we didn't have a visual sighting, I consider this a Bigfoot encounter due to the circumstances and location. I love nature. I've always believed or wanted to believe that there are still enough wild places on Earth where a large animal can exist, but not widely recognized with the positive proof that most humans require. This may be a romantic notion, but I also think there's enough evidence for Bigfoot's existence to be considered a strong possibility. The truth is, there have been numerous reports of sightings throughout history, and even credible film and video examples. There are fossils of a very large ape that roughly matches the description of relatively recent sightings. The scientific name assigned to these fossils is Gigantopithecus blacki. I've seen photographs and video of footprint casts that are impressively realistic. There's also widespread cultural evidence from Native Americans. After my own personal experience, I have no doubts of Bigfoot's existence. Our encounter occurred on Mother's Day around the year of 2012. We lived in a very rural, wild, and mountainous area. We liked to drive around to see the local beauty by way of the numerous logging roads. We decided to go out to a remote area and have a picnic. The wife wanted to dig up a wild rhododendron to bring home and plant in her garden. I remembered seeing a big area of large rhododendron plants somewhere between Gallus, Agnes, and Powers, Oregon. This is an exceptionally wild old-growth forest area within a vast region of sparsely inhabited forest land. We left early in the morning and drove about an hour and a half from our house to reach the location I had in mind. We found a rhododendron in a ditch next to the road. It was also a very scenic location, so we broke out our sandwiches, drinks, and enjoyed the beautiful spring day. We weren't there long when we heard an exceptionally loud, low-pitched roar and growl. I've never heard anything like this in my life. It was obvious the roar came from a very large animal. The sound sent shivers down my spine and set my heart racing. I felt like the roar was coming from a location maybe only a hundred feet away. I whirled around to look up at a well-timbered hill above us to see what it was, but I could see nothing. I should have seen something because the giant trees were shading out most of the underbrush, giving the area an open park-like appearance. I feel I need to make a greater effort to describe the sound. I don't think I can accurately convey this animal sound. It was monstrous. I've heard many animals bellow. I love nature. I've spent a lot of time in the wilderness and at zoos all over the country. This roar easily dwarfed anything I have ever heard, including elephants, lions, tigers, and bears. It was shockingly deep, loud, and forceful. It sounded like a monster movie roar perhaps from a giant dinosaur. It was like King Kong amplified on a movie theater surround sound system. This was a roar, bellow, growl, and rumble all combined and coming from numerous directions as it reverberated from the nearby surrounding hills. It was a knee-buckling, chest-thumping, stunning, and a disorienting, harsh intrusion into my reality that shattered my peace of mind. It was like a violent, furious gorilla the size of a boxcar. The sound was very aggressive, forceful, and intimidating. I've been trying to think how I could possibly convey the magnitude of this roar, growl, howl. It's not possible. None of these descriptions do it justice. I've unsuccessfully searched for animal sounds on YouTube that might match what we heard. I'm the type of guy who runs towards a poisonous snake to get a better look. I've worked as a beekeeper. I've been within 20 feet of a thousand-plus pound wild crocodile while it was feeding, and I cherished that experience. In this case, I barked a command to my wife and daughter to get into the car. 
Normally, I would be met with protestations and or apathy given our short time at the location, but they immediately complied. In fact, they were two steps ahead of me, leaving me all alone outside. I've only felt extreme loneliness a couple of times in my life, and both times were when I felt threatened by true moral danger. Standing there outside for just a few seconds after my family had taken cover, I felt that loneliness from the assault of that auditory threat. I then shook off my shock and defensive posture to make our escape with speed and urgency and headed back to the relative safety of civilization. I would like to think that this haste was due to my fatherly protective instinct for my daughter, but if I were alone, I'm not sure that I wouldn't have fled as quickly. The sound of what must have been from a massive beast convinced me it was deadly serious, and it was imperative that we leave immediately. I wish I was a great descriptive writer, had a recording of this experience, had more witnesses, or I belonged to a local therapy group of other witnesses. I'm not able to describe this accurately enough, or people just don't want to acknowledge it. People respond with, it must have been a bear, or have you ever heard an elk bugle? All I could do is sigh and think that these people are being condescending. Really, they just don't know, and I can't convey what happened descriptively enough. These well-meaning suggestions would be laughable to them if I was able to somehow implant the exact experience into their consciousness. Thanks for helping me get this off my chest. I enjoy listening to you read the stories of others who have had similarly life-altering experiences with these impressive beasts. Charles Thanks for listening. If you've had an encounter or sighting of a Sasquatch and would like your story told here, please email me, Lynn Smith, at bigfootcasefiles at mail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.